Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here, and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, I've talked about price versus value a number of times, and uh, I want to retouch on that again. Um, the price is what somebody paid for an item. It has nothing to do with what the item is worth. Now, some people love to argue that, oh, an, uh, an item is worth whatever someone will pay for it. And that is 100% incorrect okay if i am willing to pay ten thousand dollars for this strap of singles that does not mean a strap of singles is worth ten thousand dollars it also does not mean that you can sell a strap of singles for ten thousand dollars it also means you should not buy a strap of singles for five thousand dollars thinking that you can sell them for ten thousand dollars okay um, what somebody will pay for an item has nothing to do with the value value is the consensus of what the collecting community is willing to pay. There are numerous guidebooks that'll tell you that. Uh, you can take a note to a dealer, and if a dealer shows interest in the note, he can tell you what the value of a note is. If a dealer tells you that your note doesn't have value, it's not the dealer trying to screw you over. <laughs> your note just doesn't have any value. If you have people trying to tell you that your note is worth money, and that you should sell it, and they show you eBay listings of people selling that note, um, you should then sell your note to the person telling you that. <laughs> if they're the ones telling you it's worth money, then they should be willing to buy it. And if they are saying it's worth money, and they're not willing to buy it from you, well, then it isn't worth anything. Now, people love to debate me <laughs> when I pull out random note saying this is worthless, and they go, oh no, I have a friend that buys... Okay, great. In fact, this just recently happened. More often than not, I tell people all the time, put your money where your mouth is. Well, in a recent video, I did uh, a video saying uh, how a bunch of notes didn't have any value. One of the notes uh, had a specific year. I believe the year was 1959 or whatever. Um, the, the year was part of the serial number. And I said, these are worthless. Don't bother saving them. Nobody's going to buy anything. They have no additional value. And a particular person wrote back, oh, yes, they do. I have a friend who will buy every single one of those notes that have 1959 on them. Anywhere on the note, he'll pay $15 a piece. Okay, that does not mean a note that says 1959 on it is worth $15. That means one guy on the planet likes to get notes that say 1959, which means uh, roughly 500 people are going to watch this video right away. So if each of you go through the notes that you have and find a note that says 1959, that means there will be 500 of these notes coming that guy's way. Do you really think that guy is going to pay 500 people $15 a piece for those notes? Probably not. He probably told this particular person, hey, if you run across any of these notes, I will buy them for $15. So this person in the comments tells me they're worth $15. I said, fine, I will pull out all of the 1959 notes that I find. And since you say they're $15, you can buy them for me for $7. And he said, go ahead and put them on eBay. Now you see eBay is the ultimate... Uh, safeguard, I guess you can say. If somebody wants to say something is worth that value, I will put it up on eBay. And if they want to buy it, they can buy it. Because eBay will make sure that I get paid. And if I don't ship the item, then eBay will make sure that the person gets their money back. So you have this little safety thing. You don't have to worry about somebody not paying or somebody not shipping or whatever. Since you're going through eBay as a third party, you know you're going to get paid for the stuff and you know the stuff is going to get shipped out. So when this guy said, I will pay $7, I went through all my stuff. It took me an hour. I went through every note I had in the house and I pulled seven notes that were from, that said 1959 in the serial number. And uh, I put the seven notes. I did $49 because seven times seven is 49 plus $5 shipping. And uh, that's what I put up on eBay. And he bought them. Did he sell these seven notes for $15 a piece to random dude? Don't know. I don't care. Am I a scammer 
for selling this guy seven notes for $49 plus shipping. Uh, no. Some of you may be confused on that. Some of you may wonder, how can you say you're not a scammer when you just scam that guy? Well, I didn't. I told the guy that they were worth a dollar a piece. And he said, no. He said he would give me $7 for them. I said I would take the $7, but they're only worth a dollar a piece. So I made him aware that they were worth a dollar a piece. He chose to still buy them, knowing that they were worth a dollar a piece. It wasn't me promoting them as being worth more than a dollar. He was the one that said, these are worth this much. He put his money where his mouth is. Did he actually sell the seven notes to the guy for $15? I don't know. And frankly, I don't care. Because even if he did, I got seven times my money on those. He will only be getting two times his money on those. So I still win. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what I found this week. Let's get those out of there. What do I have? Starting off. Here's a note where the three on both sides is slightly underprint or under inked. Is that an error? Technically, it's an error. Is it worth anything? No, not really. Why would an under ink be worth anything if an over ink isn't worth anything? It's just the other end of the spectrum. Is it neat? Sure. Worth anything? No. Uh, here's a note with 1986. This one would actually be December 6th, or you could look at it as June 12th. Um, not the way you want to see a birthday note, but you know, if it once again, if it was my birthday, I think it would be cool. I would, I would want it. Here's a trinary, four sixes and sevens, ones, fives, and sixes. Once again, trinaries and quads, I save trying to match serial numbers. I do not save them because I believe trinaries and quads are worth anything. Trinaries and quads are worth a dollar. But by saving trinaries and quads, I don't have to save every note I come across. So this way I still have a chance, using what's called the birthday paradox, to uh, find paired serial numbers, which I have successfully done. Uh, this is threes, sixes, and eights. Ones, threes, and sixes. Uh, th threes, fives, and nines. Ones, threes, and fours. On an older note, it's a 1993. Oh, this one's actually quads as well. And here's another quad fours. Quad sevens with a fifth. Quad nines with a fifth. And some stars. 2017 A star. Don't forget, check your stars to see if they're filled in. Uh, 2017 A star, 2017 star, another 2017, 2017 rough shape. Hopefully it's not worth anything. Uh, some people will go nuts going, look, there's a zero and a one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a... Nope, never mind. <laughs> yeah, people go nuts over that stuff, but I mean, there's a pair of twos in there and then there's a nine, which has nothing to do with anything else. So no, it's just, it's a star note and it's trashed is probably going back in circulation. 2017 star here, 2013 star, 2013 B. And if we look, 034 is the number. You're looking for 032 to 096. Those are in the duplicate range. This is one of the duplicates. Once again, probably a $20 note, believe it or not. Uh, here's a 2006 star note. That's something you don't see too often. Now for my older notes, 2003A in rough shape, another 2003A, 2003A. I save these because nobody else does. If you're looking to fill older stuff, where are you going to find it? I don't think there's any additional value really on these, but I just know that nobody saves them, and I don't find that many of them per thousand, so I'll yank them. I'll only keep the better ones. This just shows you how many I found. 2003, 2001, 1999, another 99, another 99, and another 1999. 1995, checking to see if it's a web note. It is not. 1995, 93. Nice shape on that one, too. Another 1993. You don't find very many of those, but I've run across quite a few lately. 1988A, and the oldest note I found... This is a 1985. That's what I found. What did I pull this week? I thought this was really cool. It's the only one I've ever seen, so I decided that I have to have it. It's graded, and it's pretty cool. This 
is an American banknote company, Testnote. Now you have probably seen these. Uh, I've sold a couple of these already in the past. This one has 10 units, says 1929, graded 65 EPQ. And one of the things you're gonna notice is it doesn't have the print lines. A lot of times these had roller marks. You'll see roller marks in black and green on these. This one does not. That's, that's definitely different. If I look real close, you can actually see a little teeny tiny blue here. Actually, that is part of the paper. That's part of the security. Is that? Let me look. Not sure. Not sure if that's part of the paper, part of the security features or not, but they do seem to be evenly spread. Anyway, I'm not concerned about it because it's already graded. I don't have to worry. One of the other things about this particular note, you can see it does say exceptional paper quality on there. Uh, if I hold it up to the light, it has a security thread. I never noticed those before in these. So this one might be one of the few that actually has it. Now, of course, this is a specimen note, and this was produced by the American Banknote Company. And this was done, even though it says 1929, this was not done in 1929. This was actually done sometime in the 70s. And uh, I think it was done in the 70s. Uh, and this was done because the American Banknote Company wanted to show uh, the quality that they would be able to produce. Now, it's not printed on the correct paper, uh, but it is. it does use intaglio printing. If this wasn't in here, you could actually feel the printing that's on here. Now, I've talked a lot about this particular bill, but I did not mention the most important thing. Most of these specimen notes, actually every other one of these specimen notes that I've ever seen, the face is done in green and the back is done in black. And the reason they did that is because on our notes, the faces are done in black and the backs are done in green. So to avoid any confusion at all, when they did these, they did it the opposite. They put a green face here instead of the standard black ink. So with it being green here and black here, it was very easy to identify this being the wrong note. So I I don't know for a fact, but I'm assuming that this might have been one of the one of the either one of the early prints, and the BEP said don't print notes that way, print them the other way, green this way, black on the other side, or it's one of the late prints because it has the strip in there. I'm just looking to see if there's a watermark. No watermark. Okay, so yeah. We're talking, once again, a specimen with the green face and black back compared to most of the specimens, in fact, every other specimen I've ever seen that has a green front and a black back. No idea what that makes this worth. I, I see some of the Giori test notes, and I know that uh, the common Giori notes are 100, 150, 200, and I know that the rare Giori notes can be upwards of $1,000. I have no idea what that puts the price on this one. I haven't been able to find anything on it, but what I do know is it is graded by PMG, so it is legit. It's graded impressively, and it's nothing like any other one that I've ever seen. So it is certainly a incredible addition to my collection. All right, if you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.